What? And good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Orange Blossom Social. I am your humble correspondent, Bobby Randall. Look at the audience. Look at the faces. A round of applause. Everybody making some noise in here this morning. Good morning, everybody. We are all here. The Apostle Paul, producer and chief cook and bottle washer of the show. Good morning. He's here. Fast, uh, Fast Eddie is here. Good morning. And uh, Captain Kurt up there. And, of course, Heather and Roger Byers this morning. And... Can you get a look at this, man? Homemade mm. cinnamon. Uh, are those rolls or buns, Eddie? Uh, I think they're buns, but they probably would look a lot better up here on this piano. Now you need to keep them away from you. They're awesome looking. They smell great. Uh, I've already reached in and taken a, a little bit of a nibble. So they're, uh, they're uh, pretty good. Uh, first of all, uh, before we get started into the show, uh, we had to move, most of us go motorcycle riding on Wednesday, as everybody knows, but we have a show tomorrow that we'll talk about here in a little bit. So we decided to go today. I pull in the parking lot, no motorcycle. What's up with you? I have work to do. What could you possibly have to do that has any amount of responsibility? Um, well, um, see, see, if Mike would have told me they were going to maybe Peach Wave, I probably would have hopped on Oh, did Mike the forget? gold wing. Yeah, Mike's the, cap Mike's the captain of the, uh, the Orange Blossom Bandits. And uh, we ride on Wednesdays, and, uh, and I thought Eddie was going to go, but nonetheless. So that's okay. We'll invite. Uh, it, sometimes people show up that we don't know, and, uh, and they just ride along. Uh, anyway, uh, people calling in on this sort of stuff. Uh, so we had a great weekend this weekend. Uh, I w I'm still surprised to see you here, Eddie. Uh, the Bee Gees were here. I would have sworn you'd have ran off at them. Yeah, they wanted me, but see, the money just wasn't right. Well, you, yeah. you know, that's what lawyers are for. I'm expensive. Yeah, yeah, I know. When you uh, when you came out here uh, in your uh, Bee Gees outfit with your guitar and your um, uh, and your hat, your helmet, and everything, I had not been that shocked in my <laughs> life since uh, the the hogs ate my brother. Yeah. Dave, uh, Dave and I are, were a team on that guitar solo, man. That was right yeah. on the money. Dave was looking over at me going, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> get him off the stage. Roger Byers, <laughs> I tried to get his attention to get security. He's not even looking up. Nah. He wouldn't even look up here. <laughs> all right. Well, it was a big time if you all missed Eddie's debut. He came out in that dumb helmet. And uh, what are you going to do with it? I see the guitars found a place on the wall. Yeah, I'll probably take it home, though. I, um, well, there's I a did guitar. get Macy to take a picture with it. Macy looked really cool holding it. Yeah, well, that uh, there's a lady that made us a guitar out there in the lobby that's pretty cool. Put it out there in the lobby next to that. Or, now I can tell you a really cool place for that helmet, though. Yeah. No, I can't. Have you, if you, you all probably haven't been here, but behind the building back here, there's a, a huge dumpster. <laughs> it's awesome, too. I mean, that's I can. It, when you, vi when you right picture there. that in your mind, I mean, that you can see it. Close your eyes and just see it like that. 
And also, uh, we had a lot of disco balls going on this weekend. How many did you have up? Uh, three, three of them, yeah. Had disco they balls were just everywhere. Beaming. Yeah, actually, don't let him go on the ride. Let him stay here and take those three down. Yeah, I'm taking yeah. them down. Yeah, no kidding. Williams and Ree might not have a disco joke. Yeah, yeah. I talked to them. Well, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, Williams and Ree, everybody, will be here finally uh, Thursday. I didn't tell the bosses, um, but on uh, what's today? Uh, Tuesday, Monday, Sunday. On Sunday, I got a text from uh, those boys and said uh, we're in South Dakota. They were playing a, a casino up there, and um, there was a blizzard headed there. And uh, they were Delta Airlines was closing all the airlines and all that stuff. And if you remember correctly, Williams and Ree have already canceled once. And uh, he said, we'll be there if we have to walk. I got the call yesterday. They're in town. And then he called me up, Terry. I've known Terry and I have been friends for probably 30-some years. We used to be neighbors. But um, he, he called me up and he said, well, now I can't get any cars at the airport in Tampa. And, uh, of course, yeah, you come and get me. Well, I wouldn't tell him no because he's my buddy. And I said, okay, I'll come drop, get you in Tampa. Uh, but it, that was today. And then I said, I got a bunch of guys I want to go motorcycle riding with. you know. So then he called me back. So they have a car, rent a car, all is good. Um, I guess we're going to go out and eat dinner uh, this evening. I told him I'd uh, pick them up and we'll go eat dinner. But they're in town. And you need to come see Williams and Ree, y'all. They're really funny. And uh, they're, they're pretty famous. They've been around for a long time. And uh, they're retiring, so uh, they're going to go to the house. This may be um, your last chance to, to see those guys. And uh, so invite you to do that. That's on Wednesday, one show, and tickets are available uh, at the box office, I believe. And uh, there was something else I was going to say to you, Fast Eddie, but I can't remember what it was. Anyway, uh, so oh, I was going to talk about the Bee Gees for a minute. Uh, so the coolest thing about the Bee Gees is uh, my wife and I, um, uh, she, she likes a little bit of my music and I like a little bit of her music, but we have certain kinds of music that, that are kind of distant. And, uh, and part of the, the problem is the music that I like and, and that I grew up with and, uh, and everything that I really love, the reason uh, she doesn't really uh, like it or understand it mostly is because she wasn't born yet. So, uh, so, uh, oh, honey, remember this one? No. Oh, honey, remember this one? No, no, not that one. Uh, honey, how about E.T.? Did you see E.T.? Anyway. Uh, so the Bee Gees was kind of a cool concert for us because they did a couple of those old songs that I liked. Oh, yeah. Massachusetts, The Joker. I started a joke. I loved all that stuff. But when they started singing in their, uh, out their nose, or I could use another orifice, but out whatever that was, uh, and it sounded like Mickey Mouse. <clears throat> I was out. I was out. Stay in alive. You can do it, Eddie. Give me a verse. Stay in alive. See that? Yeah. See that's. Uh, th does that sound pleasant to your ears? Uh, no. No, me either. It's like uh, like cats uh, fighting in the alley is what it sounded like to me. But um, big success. People loved it. Show was sold out, uh, and my wife and I were able to enjoy. Um, the first part I was all in, and second part she was all in. So we uh, we enjoyed uh, the Bee Gees. It was an awesome show, uh, and they were all both shows sold out, so I presume they will be back uh, next year, and uh, we can only uh, hope for that. Uh, and and uh, hopefully by then, Eddie, you've lost that helmet. No, no. I need some boots. I will tell you this. If you ever show up on one of our motorcycle rides with, the, <laughs> with that helmet, Mike, who's the captain, we have a captain of our motorcycle club, is Mike, and he's the captain. He, takes, he leads us where we ride. He's an ex-cop. If you show up with that, I'll have him shoot your ass. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, be lead, I'll be leading the pack with that one. Yeah. I'll get that helmet on. You show up with that. It's good enough that we let you ride with a Honda. <laughs> Most of us ride real motorcycles, but Eddie ride, we let Eddie ride a, a, a Honda because uh, we love Eddie. Uh, good Friday show coming up this Friday, everybody. And um, we have Carmen Harrell. Uh, I, I, you know, Carmen got married. I don't know if she changed her last name or she's still using her real name or old name or whatever you think. I don't know. I know she got married. But uh, Carmen Harold will be here. And, uh, man, what an awesome singer she is. Mm -hmm. uh, she's unbelievable. And uh, that's on. it says the show's sold out. So if you um, didn't get tickets for it, uh, just drive by and we'll open the doors. You can listen uh, a little bit. But that's going to be a, a great show uh, this uh, Friday. 
Do you, do you know Carmen uh, is uh, from, uh, not far from my hometown? Wow. Yeah, I didn't know that one time. She was, uh, I was just asking her, you know, questions. Yeah, where are you from, this and that. She's from Michigan, and she went to Ferris College and lived in Mount Pleasant, which is the next town over from where I lived uh, at a different time. She's younger than I am. But anyway, she's an old Michigan girl. And, of course, uh, our own Chris Cockburn will uh, have the piano center stage and uh, take command of the Good Friday show. So we're excited uh, about that going on. Uh, let's see, get off the business. Anybody uh, see the remake? Uh, Mike, did you guys, or Dan, when do you guys see the remake of Roadhouse? Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've heard it's ho horrible. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we uh, it, the, of course, the original Roadhouse, uh, the one reason, you see the original? Old, oh, old, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, Jeff Healy was in the show, you know, the guitar player, and um, I did dates with uh, Jeff Healy. He was on Capitol Records in Canada because uh, he was a Canadian. And I was on Capitol Records here, and we did a tour in Canada, and, uh, um, and, and Healy was on a couple of shows. We did a couple of shows with Healy, and he was a great guy, and, and, uh, that, and his music was all throughout that show, which I think helped make his show, because it was great blue stuff. Mm -hmm. The music in the new Roadhouse is um, just a bunch of different people, nothing that stands out. Um, of course, Conor McGregor was the big deal, going to be in the show, uh, and it's kind of hard for me to accept Conor uh, uh, McGregor being a bad, you know, bad A word, because um, he's only like five six or something like that. And I think he weighs, I, he may be beefed up to a 145 or 150 now. I think my wife could kick his butt. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> but she, but he, um, he's all buffed up. In the, uh, I don't know. I just didn't, the original one was so good. You have to follow UFC to understand Colin McGregor. Well, no, I did. Yeah. I was a I was a Colin McGregor yeah. fan. I liked it, but what you know, but and he beat the fire out of these people. And he was a bad boy, but he only fought in featherweight. You know, he wasn't like fighting the big boys. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know, when you give you take a guy that's two fifty six five or something like that, they're gonna punt him like a football. Like I'd <laughs> like to punt that helmet. <laughs> yeah, that's what would happen to him. Anyway, uh, I, I I put a little post on Facebook, and most people seem to agree that it wasn't uh, good. Here's a, a synopsis or scenario, scenario scenario that I came up with. The original show was Roadhouse, one word. Can you tell me the name of the bar, Eddie? No. Oh. You can't? Mm -mm. It was called the Double Deuce. I thought but I played a place with chicken wire before, though. I <clears> played well, that. But it was called the Double Deuce. And so, but they didn't call this one Roadhouse. They called it Road House, two different words. So there may be by there's some legality things going on there, legal things that they couldn't call it Roadhouse 2. But anyway, so save your money. But we, we got through half of it, and, uh, and my uh, charming bride fell asleep. <laughs> and uh, I tried to, to watch the uh, second half of it while she was sleeping. Man, she snores like a damn buffalo. <laughs> and <laughs> that's not true. But uh, <laughs> yeah. she, did the, she did fall asleep. And then we, uh, we watched the, the second half last night, and we both agreed that it got a little better on the second half. So, so much for, uh, for Roadhouse in our, uh, in our review. So you got a record this morning, Eddie? You always yeah. have a cool record. Eddie. Yeah, this, this is, uh, of course, uh, my all-time favorite show here at The Offering. <laughs> it was uh, Neil McCoy. And I, the two stories I have of Neil McCoy is the first time he walked in here, and he had never played here before. Yeah. Neil gets on stage and he, he looks up at the screens because we always put the advertisements of who's coming up there. Yeah. Neil McCoy stands on the stage and said, you know what? I've seen all the stars that have been here. He goes, I'm better than all of them. I don't know why I haven't been here before. That's funny. He's a nut. And then he, uh, his manager was telling me a story back there. But there used to be really big festivals. Well, there's still pretty big fest country music festivals. And Neil was famous for climbing up the trussing and yep. getting up on top. Yep. And in Wheeling, West Virginia, the manager said how we got Neil to quit doing that is they put barbed wire around the trussing so he yeah. couldn't climb it. But, yeah, he's, he's, he's not. But great guy, great great show. Always a favorite here. Yeah. Probably um, when I was doing this uh, TV show, I don't want to say that I helped do anything because I didn't, but I was doing this national television show. And the CMAs were coming, and uh, I said, somebody needs to nominate Neil McCoy for Entertainer of the Year uh, because that dude is the entertainer of, of the year all the time. He's awesome. On stage, he's unbelievable. And uh, 
You know, a lot of guys come here at the Orange Blossom Opry, a lot of the acts come, and um, they come in and they, you know, they're cordial. Some people are nice. Everybody's nice, but some people, you know, stay out on their bus all day. Some people chat with you. Some people don't. Neil McCoy is usually the first guy off the bus, and he's going to talk to everybody here. He doesn't care if you're the owner or you're the guy that cleans the toilets. He's going to introduce himself. He's going to talk to you and be a, a fine fellow. That's the kind of guy uh, Neil McCoy is. Now, you want some real trivia on how long have I known Neil McCoy? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, there you are. I just called you to see if they – so you got out, right? Because yeah, uh, Roger sent bail money. You got They got you out? All right, because we'll get you up here in just a minute. Um, uh, where was it? Neil oh, McCoy. So I've known Neil McCoy uh, so long. Here's two trivia questions for you. Uh, ready? I was in a famous band called Sawyer Brown that we came up with that name. It's the name of a street. But for years, about three years, we toured in all the beer joints, and we had a different name. And Neil McCoy, was, and we played the same beer joints, and he had a band. You got the answer to either one, Eddie? No. We'll leave it out there to see if anybody <laughs> can on Facebook. Because Neil McCoy, was, uh, he wasn't Neil McCoy. He was a it was a band. He had a band, he just, and so did we. So we'll see if you can come up with the answer to what the name of Sawyer Brown was before it was Sawyer Brown and what Neil McCoy's band was uh, rolling on there. Anyway, I shouldn't eat on this, but man, this is good. They're yeah. supposed to keep the camera on him yeah. while I was eating. Put it um, over here. Yeah, over there at Fast Eddie. So what Neil McCoy album is it? It is his CDs. This was a, this was a, a bunch of his CDs. He signed uh, um, You Gotta Love That. His, yeah, his very first one. Speaking of his very first one, I, I mentioned this to him that the first time I seen Neil McCoy, he only had one hit on the radio. It was brand new. just came out of the box, and he was opening for Dolly Parton, and it was in uh, yeah. Big Amphitheater, and he almost <coughs> stole the show from Dolly. Nobody steals the show from Dolly Parton, but yep. he was that good on his very first yeah, single. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He almost – I couldn't believe I said – I knew his song, but I couldn't believe it. And he said he remembered that show because Dolly it was his birthday, and Dolly sang "Happy Birthday" to him yeah. backstage. Yeah, oh, he's an awesome amazing. entertainer. He, yeah. he's just a, a, he can just he's funny. Um, he swears a lot. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> a guy that swears a lot. Yeah. You know what? I read this thing that said that men that swear are more intelligent than men that don't. So I'm pretty smart. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, and my wife is brilliant. Um, oh. Can I tell the story on my wife? Can I? My wife is uh, a pharmacist, and uh, I always, and is brilliant, way way smarter than I am. And you you have to be smart to be a pharmacist, as you all know, like real smart. So yesterday the phone rings and she goes, "Honey, I was at I was at Publix and I, I think I left my phone in Publix." What? Okay. So I jump in the jeep, fly down to Publix, and I literally walked up and down the aisles at Publix calling her, trying to see if I could hear the phone. Not that I can hear that well anyway. But So I look all over, up and down the aisles, and then I call her up, and, and I had to call the hospital because she was working, and I, I can't call her on her phone. I said, well, honey, where were you? What departments were you in? Because I don't need to be looking in the motor oil section if you're buying orange juice. Where were you? So she tells me, so I go to those sections, and I look around, and nothing. Where'd you park? Told me where I parked, looked out there. Finally, I said, man... I'm just going to drive over to where she worked and uh, look at her car. She's got a convertible sports car, hot rod. So I get by out there. I get by. Well, I can't hear. So I call. You know, I'm thinking I'm listening out there. Listen, got my ear up to the, the hood. Can't hear nothing. Can't hear. I said, well, what? I look in the thing and I went. So her car, after about a half an hour, I called. She came out. I said, honey, your phone's right there in the seat, <laughs> right there. But I've done worse, so I've gotten done the same thing. So I we, we literally look at your phone every day here. Yes, we do. That's part of the problem. If, if, <laughs> when, Rod, when the buyers, when they hire you, Roger and Heather hire you, that's part of the thing that they, they, your qualifications have to say. Are you willing and able to do the job? You know, Apostle Paul is a, um, a stage manager. Are you willing to move equipment? Yes. Are you able to play? Yes. Are, are you able to uh, search for Bobby's phone at any given time? And that's right on the uh, application here at the Orange Blossom Opry, part of the gig. Uh, let me tell you about another gig coming up, and then uh, we have a special guest here. Uh, my buddy, my pal, my old buddy T.G. Shepard will be here uh, on the 20th of, uh, of this month. It's not April yet, is it? It's on the 20th of April. It's still March. 
don't know what day it is. It's April. Is it March or April? It's, it's March. March. Today's March. Thanks, Mike. All right. March today, uh, but April the, the, the next week. Anyway, on the 420, uh, T.G. Shepard will be here. And I always look forward to that because I've been friends with him for so long. But um, our band gets to back him. And um, one of the coolest things about this gig, I've always said, the, not, not one of, but yeah, one of the cool, many things, but one of the cool things is I get to see all my buddies, but then you get the opportunity to play and back them, back, back you know. So TG's going to be here. We'll hang out with them. We'll laugh and, you know, make jokes and talk about everybody. But then our band gets to back him up, and that's kind of a cool thing, kind of an honor to do that, and, and um, especially with your buddies. And TG's awesome. So uh, he'll be here on the, the 20th, and, uh, and uh, he's got awesome, awesome songs, hit after hit. I always get nervous when the boss heads toward the, the, uh, the uh, stage, and, and, uh, but he's coming after him, not me. So anyway, oh, T.G. Shepard. He's, he's got a microphone now. T.G. Shepard. Oh, no, he's You're got the trouble microphone. trouble now. I think, where's he going with the microphone? We don't know. Oh. We, we're, uh, we're in all in all here. Oh, he's coming up here. <laughs> oh, he's not coming up here. Oh, he's going to get him. Uh, yeah, all right. We'll don't bring take up, that in the restroom. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're going to bring up our... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on. Well, well, let's get him up here now. Come on, Neil. Everybody knows Neil Bogus, right? Are Y'all we going to let Neil sit by them donuts? <laughs> I'm going to sit oh. the, Here, Neil. Don't let him near the... Uh, no, no, I wouldn't do that. The Neil. Danishes. Hey, Neil, have a seat right here. Ooh. Right there by yeah, the donuts. Open it up right there. That'll I got it up. You know what? <laughs> How swell. Doesn't uh, that thing smell awesome, man? Man, that thing's awesome. It smells really good. Uh, anyway, so catch. Uh, be sure and catch uh, T.G. Shepard. That's going to be a, uh, a great show. Man, you never really realize how many uh, hits... Uh, hits he's had. Uh, uh, speaking of hits, how you been? Neil Bogus, everybody. I'm right, doing pretty right on good. It. Right, you're good. Just stay right up on it. This one is an eater, huh? Yeah, well, most really good microphones you have to stay on and sing right down that, like this. That's what they're for. Uh, Neil Bogus, of course, the host of uh, the, uh, the uh, Showcase show. Hardest working man in show business. The worst <laughs> job in the world. I had that job for two weeks uh, when I first, when there was some things changed here. And I said, oh, sure, I'll do that. I can handle that. The end of week one, I went, man, that's kind of tough. you got to get all these people lined up to sing, all these people in a row. And uh, you can't get uh, two people to agree on the president. How can you get uh, 20 people or 10 people to agree on anything? So uh, you can't. And then the second week, I called up Roger and said, I ain't doing this. I can't do this. I don't know how anybody can do that. So um, we found Neil, and uh, he was just uh, getting out of the slammer. He, that part of his, per, <laughs> his parole was, well, if you can handle this. So um, he does a great job. Good morning. Good morning. It actually was similar to what you said, except I wasn't in jail. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when Roger called me, he called me. I had just landed at the or, uh, MCO Orlando Airport, coming back from a gig I was playing at the State Fair in South mm -hmm. Dakota. And we're driving up here, and I see on my phone, it goes, I go, uh, hmm. Roger Byers is calling me. How did he even know I was back in the country? Well, he didn't. So he, he, I picked up the phone, and I talked to him a little bit. And he said, would you be interested in a job? And I said, sure. Can you come right now? <laughs> and I said, well, I've got my wife with me and uh, my suitcases. But if you don't mind, I'll swing by my house because I live over by Claremont. And I said, I'll throw it in there. I'll come up here. And he says, I'll wait. So I got up here. Roger didn't wait. <laughs> uh, well, did uh, did you uh, were you a bit a, a bit worried at all? Because if you see Roger Byers calling you, he owns another business, <laughs> and <laughs> and when Roger Byers calls you, that could go south real quick yeah. for you. Because you have a place they, for you. Yeah, they own several. The Byers own several funeral homes. So you you, know, you that's the call you don't want to get. No, I wasn't too worried, but uh, we, we talked on the phone and. The rest is four years here now. Yeah. So. You've been five, is that correct? I saw this thing. I've been here five years. My gosh. How, how, did that, how did that go by so quick? I spent my first year and a half sitting right over there. And in some ways, uh, that was a little bit better job. I, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I just showed up and played and went home. And uh, uh, But uh, this place, in the last... Three years, uh, you know, I mean, COVID hurt everybody in, uh, in uh, 2020. It kind of hurt a little bit. But um, uh, this place in the last few years has just become uh, crazy. I mean, it's unbelievable. I, I, it's a whole 
different place, different things. Uh, I mean, it's just really, really changed well, a lot. Well, I'm going to embarrass you because what the changes that the buyers and Bobby have made have been tremendous. Let's give them a round of applause. Uh, no, it's I, true. Well, and I want to tell you how I know because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that, Neil? Oh, yeah, go. Well, if you go on our Facebook page or YouTube, you can go two, two and a half years back and see the shows from that time. Yeah. And there's a lot of difference between those shows and these shows, and it's all for the better. Well, so congratulations well, to you. Well, thanks. I wasn't looking for that. But um, yeah. here's the deal, uh, and thanks to the buyers. Um, they, they, they're our, they're our boss and they're the, I mean, yeah. So what am I trying to say here is, is they were kind enough to allow me to do what I wanted to do and then take a chance and, uh, allow uh, us to put together, assemble this band. Um, <clears throat> you know, it, it was, uh, I, I'm not going to talk about the, the days past, but if, uh, I, I hope some of these people understand that, uh, most of the guys in this band have played at the the the, the, the highest level at, at all at all. I mean, played with major major stars and and could again. Any one of the guys in this band could get a job playing for anybody they wanted if they, you know, the position came open and they applied and got in there. Their talent is far superior to people who live around here. That's not saying anything, but it's just saying that we were able to get these people to move here and come from all over the country, they are, uh, buyers allowed us to to see that and make that happen. And then you're seeing the results of having an unbelievable band. And this is a, what is this place? It's not a lemonade stand, it's a music venue. What do people do here? They come and listen to music. So what's the most important thing here? Not donuts, the most important thing is music. And uh, and we are, we've got, we've got some of the best guys in the, in the United States playing here. So that's what that's all about. It's not all on me, but, well, but the, what the hats is, off to them for letting us make that happen. What it has done for me on Thursday nights when I took this job over, there was a list of about 200 people on there. And so I immediately started going through the list. Now, skip ahead four years later, Bobby, you've got this band up here. People are calling me, <laughs> asking me, can I come and sing? Some, uh, well, from Ohio, uh, Georgia, we get a lot of Georgia people all from all over the place. Can I talk about our contest? Well, it's going on, uh, t uh, what's today, Neil? Tuesday? Today's Tuesday. Tuesday, so tomorrow's Wednesday, and then uh, Thursday is the big contest. We've had this uh, showcase uh, contest going on. It's, has it been 10 weeks already? It has. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been. This you, is you, the 12th week already. You two have done an awesome job, though, because Neil has to put all this together, get all these people lined up. And I, I did it for two weeks. I told you it's a nightmare trying to get those people lined up, what time they're going to sing, what songs they're going to sing. And uh, let me ask you this before we give away yep. the goods. So now that it's down to the um, final, so this Thursday is the, the, the five of the cat daddies. Are, are, are they, um, just tell me about the contestants. Are they nervous? Are they thinking about songs? Are they, what are the, what's going on with the contestants uh, in the final days? There they are, if you want to read them. Some of them started sending me their songs for the finals uh, like three weeks before we even did the yeah. finals. Yeah. But most of them were, uh, they're very excited. They're very nervous. Uh, I would say more eager than nervous because there's a fine line between being nervous and eager about something. But sure. they're here to do it. We started off with 86 people. Yeah. and worked our way down to the final five. Uh, a little bit more of a challenge because what happened this year was uh, right in the middle of the shows, something called COVID came back through everybody. And then the next thing I knew, influenza A, B, C, D, or whatever one it is, came back. But uh, we were able to work around that, and we're down to louder. the final five. So, um, louder, Apostle, because I got part of it when he's talking. Um, so we have the final five. Uh, and that's uh, part of that was the audience uh, got to vote. And uh, and here's what I've always thought. Uh, and, and this comes from being an old uh, record guy. And I worked for uh, a major record company for a long time in Nashville. And my job was uh, they'd say, hey, you found that guy right there. Or we found this guy. Here's here's fifteen thousand dollars. Go in the studio and try to record something. on." I did that for I can't remember how many people. I recorded Clint Black's brother. I recorded 
everybody. Anyway, the most important thing to me is uh, you, you need to pay attention to your song and your singing. And, and that is the key to success for me uh, because you've got to have a song. If you don't have a song, you don't have anything. Then if you don't have a song that you can perform and pull off, then you, you've shot yourself in the head. Prime example, uh, would you ever sing? Well, you might because you're nuts and from South Dakota. But, um, you know, there's songs that you shouldn't sing. Uh, I would never sing. Would you ever sing Wind Beneath My Wings? You probably have. But there's songs. I know the song, but no, I would not. There's songs that as a guy that you sing, I know what I can sing. I'm not a, I can sing, but I don't refer to myself as a singer. So the, the key to this is those people. All those people can sing all of them because every one of these cats that are in the finals are all great every one of them are awesome now they need to make sure that their voice and their song is believable that they can pull it off i've seen a couple people that said i went man man that person sang really good but they should have never sang that song prime example so there's i hope there's a lot of thought into the the guys going do you have their songs I've got their songs here too. Well, let's take we, a part. So the first guy. Okay, hold on. I want to well, say one thing here. I see who. Oh, now the I interrupted Bobby Randall. Now I'm in trouble here. <laughs> not yet, not at all. Okay, one of the things that we had as a prerequisite was that I would not help them pick songs. Good because idea. Because if you pick for one person, then the second person. Right. And I think they all got pretty tired of me saying, "I'm sorry, yeah. I can't help you." Yeah. Because what I was thinking is exactly what you were talking about. Certain songs will play better for our audience here. Uh, or if they'll come up and they'll say, well, I'll do two ballads. And I'm thinking, oh, boy, sleepy time is coming now, you know. Yeah, right. So that was my standard response. I can't help you to do that. Okay. <laughs> I got that. We could have a <laughs> night where they all sing Patsy Cline songs. <laughs> yeah. Thinking yeah. about it. And then just keep the camera on our boss, Heather, all night. <laughs> See how that goes. So out of 86, we're down to the last five. Okay, uh, first guy right here out of the box singing, Who Let the Dogs Out? Woo. Yeah, good song. What the hell? Good. No, just to take that a little bit further, um, some, some songs, like I said, uh, you shouldn't sing. And it's, you, you have to be believable. When you, if, I'm not that these guys are getting record deals, but I have to record one of these people. That's right. I do. I'm going to have to produce something on, on these people. Uh, I've learned that you know that people get up and scream or get up and do this may not necessarily make the best record the voice the song it's all important uh and our judges will look at all of that uh, the judges are going to look at their their uh, talent uh, their ability to sing uh, how they uh most of these guys as i remember look pretty good on stage look like they pretty yep. comfortable on there yep so uh, we can put Bill Lacey. Is that Bill Lacey? Bill Losey. Well, Bill Losey. I never liked Losey. I called him Lacey from years past. But Bill Losey, uh, we, do we have a picture of old Bill? We might. They said we might be able to find pictures of these it's cats. It's up there. Cool. Cats somewhere. Oh, it's up there. Bill Losey is out here. You know anything about Bill? Where is he from? Bill is an investment planner. And being an investment planner, I've watched him plan each and every song that he does. And then right. he'll, he'll call me up, should I do this song? And I'll say, remember? That's why he's singing Barnes and Noble. That's what that <laughs> Okay. But they, you can see the songs they picked. Stuff well, that fits in here. Yeah, there, I can tell you, you know, if I had to sing, you know, those, I, I, I wouldn't ever try to sing that song. I, you know, that I had a buddy of mine sing that song at my dad's funeral, and I know the guy that wrote the song and sang the song, but that's not a song. That's a song he'll be able to sing. Yep. He'll, 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 because he's awesome. Moving on to Chloe Grace, who's kind of a, Local favorite here. Um, yep, good songs, good songs for her. Um, you know, Tiffany, I Hope You Dance, that's a great song. Uh, Independence Day, big. these girls are all singing big belting songs, mm. man. You know, tough songs that are, you got to sing to be able to sing those songs. Um, I remember when uh, Neil sang Broken Wing one time. <laughs> it was uh, pretty embarrassing. Mm. Nobody gets that but you and me. <laughs> you and I is the correct grammar, not me. They will submit their songs, and if there's somebody else that has already chosen it, then I will tell them, no, you have to pick something else. And you know when it's actually been pretty well, because now there's five here, normally we would run with ten people, 
very few pick the same song. So I was surprised about that. Well, everybody likes different stuff, I yeah. guess. You know, that's a good thing. I mean, there's some favorites in there <clears throat> that are what I call, you know, I mean, if you're going to go out and try to impress somebody as a girl singer, uh, there's two or three songs you want to sing, and I can see them all on there. Yeah. Just because, you know, you can really, if you can sing that song and get out there and let her rip. I think our audiences do have favorite songs too, don't you? Yeah, yeah. But now this, uh, the, the finals are going to be judged by uh, three judges. Yes, they uh, are. Louis Stokes, Dr. Carl Bennett, and Macy Mack. And um, I said the cool thing about that is they are about as opposite as you can come, as you can get. Because Carl's, Dr. Carl's uh, the guy, he's the guy that does our John Denver thing. He's pretty uh, conservative guy, going to look, and he sings like perfect. So he's going to be looking at that. And Macy Max, a kid, and going to be looking more for the wild child or the <laughs> youth person. And then, I don't know Louis Stokes very well, but he's on the radio and he plays people, you know, new artists on the radio all the time. So he's kind of got a better idea on what's going to be on the radio today if you have that voice and song for today's radio. So I think it's good, and there's only three, so there can't be a tie. I wouldn't want to be a judge because I'd be back there screaming, you don't know what you're talking about. You listen to me. I'm telling you. The last three, four weeks, that's what I heard consistently was I don't want to be a judge because they were that close. And yeah. we could only pick one person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... Tough. You know, you had a 10% chance of coming in here, I yeah. guess. Well, even the, even last week, the the people that before those guys to get there, uh, they were awesome. I mean, every, it, it, when it started getting down the last few weeks, uh, that last week of the semifinals was, you know, the, all those guys were pretty good. We really did. There wasn't any dog barkers in there that, like, how'd nope. that guy get in there? They were all pretty good. Nope. We've got other things coming up, too, because once the contest is over, I, I want to kind of juice up the sh showcase on Thursday nights. All so right. Tell me what's going on. Well, I got your approval, and I got the management approval. We're going to do a duets night. Oh, Country boy. duets night. Eddie, on May the 16th. I have a brand Write new duet. Down. I was hoping he was going to do that. Somebody must have read my mind. I put that on my Facebook page. I have a brand new duet that I've been involved in. Oh, yeah. no. Jesus. Yeah. Praise. Praise. It's called Special Ed and Hutch. We're going to do a duet here. We, we've we done America songs, just beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, There'll be know, tears it, in the audience. I can't that. imagine anything better Hutch than that. Hutch doesn't know it yet. But no. We're, I mean, okay. that, it, the, that special ed and what? Hutch. Hutch? Yeah. 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 That right up there with a the root canal yeah. the, would be. Seals and Cross have nothing on us. I guess. Are you going to bring that guitar you had last week with you? Uh, then? Maybe. You know yeah. what? We'll have to, I have to prove that through Hutch first. I'll tell you. You need to thank the boss because I said, I want to paint that thing black. And the boss wouldn't let me. He said, no, no, don't but do that. But you have to hear the beautiful music that will come out of there. Uh, uh, the beautiful music from you two? <laughs> hey, you know, I got a great idea. Why would we right. just come up with an idea? We could run this by the boss. And this would be right up your alley, Eddie. I know where you're going. No, this, uh, no, you don't. A special night we could call. The Gong Show. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I can read his mind. <laughs> Eddie and I, I would right be there. The star. Look at me. Yeah. Look at Eddie and I, I would right be the on. Star of that. The Gong Show. I had a buddy that was on the Gong Show. All right, tell us about your duet um, the thing. Guys are gonna guy gal. Doesn't matter. Guys and gals. Guys and guys. Well, I put the feeler out yesterday on the uh, Facebook page and uh, filled all the slots. Within an hour and a half. Really? Yes, just like that. So is it? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. It but is 2024, so it can be. Guy, it could be guys and guys, yeah. or yep, it could yep. be who knows and guys. Well, everyone is guy <laughs> and a gal, so. It is a guy and a gal. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Well, that's good because we got don't some folks that can really belt it out and uh, got a father-daughter team. Oh, is that the people? The guy that and his daughter that's been here before? Yeah. I can't remember the names, but that guy is really good singer. Yep. His daughter is really good, too. Yeah, I can't remember. Yep. Name. Well, that'll yeah. be good. You It'll get, be guys, fun. Be, guys, get ready to hear. That's going to just be one night? Well, I got enough to do two or three weeks now. but yeah. uh, well, well, it doesn't matter to me. But We'll, um, we'll see how it pencils out. Get How's ready to hear Islands in the Stream. You get an opening there. Hutch yes. and I are right in there. Yeah, you know, right. What, that's what he was going to do. After, uh, after he has the... Um, 
the uh, I can't say what I want to because it's really funny, but I'll get in trouble. So, uh, yeah, well, you're you're our call, Eddie. Um, we'll be ready. You're you're on call. The guitar's you're, on the wall. You're on the list. Right after, uh, put them down. Right after the colostomy bag brothers, and then we'll call Eddie after those guys. We'll hey, be Neil. ready. That was, I cleaned it up a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, so that'll be Eddie that day. Yeah, uh, but you'll, you'll hear, question. you'll hear, you'll hear islands in the stream, right? Oh yes. And you'll hear, um, love is where you found it. Yep. That's a great duet. Just you and I. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know, know where that is. <laughs> you know my friend. Uh, Frank Myers wrote Just You and I. He wrote Just You and I. He wrote Front Porch Looking In. He wrote I Swear. And anyway. So we got all kinds of things coming up. So we're going to have duets uh, uh, on a Thursday. Is it, is it a special day? I mean, is a certain, certain Thursday? May 16th. May 16th. Yeah. Write that down. Okay. Uh, uh, I was uh, talking to the boss about uh, maybe on one of these Friday Night Lives doing a... Um, Old country show. I, uh, we we did that once. Um, a lot of people kind of want to hear that, so we did uh, when the Malthus brothers were here. And by the way, Roger and Heather, I have um, I'm working on a, a, a part a, a part of their skit that I'm going to borrow <laughs> for, for, our, show? for our Friday Night Live show coming up. Now they, they um, dead snake. Uh, do what? The dead snake. No, no, I didn't think that was funny. But I uh, it's uh, it's. Uh, it's the political joke. I'm already working on it, but it's I, I got, I'm taking a different twist. My twist is going to be that uh, I went to Washington, D.C., and uh, I got a buddy uh, that actually got me a tour and got me uh, into the White House. And I got a tour, and I actually I got to meet the president. How about that? True story, huh? True story, it is. Now, from there, <laughs> just have to show up Friday Night Live and hear... The rest of the story. All right, what else? Well, tell me about Malpas Brothers was incredible, mm -hmm. weren't they? And that last part, <laughs> yeah, did you were. laugh ever so hard in your life? I never, you know what? My wife and I were here, and um, you, know, you know what gut laughing is? I mean, when you just, yeah. I mean, like, I don't gut laugh hardly ever. I yeah, I got buddies <laughs> that are comedians. Yeah, that horse thing, was that not funny? That'll never what make it through the tour. When he was down on that horse, giving that horse that <laughs> that that. Well, uh. I under from what I understand, I talked to him a little bit. Is he does that part of the gig? He starts letting the air out of the horse. But something happened, I believe, that the air went out like before it was supposed to, or it didn't happen. So a lot of that was just ad lib, off the cuff. Now I don't know if. If that, but it went, I, I looked up there and he was down there. And because, you know, he plays the, the straight man like a lot like the Smothers Brothers, yeah. if you yeah. watch them, because the, the one guy's, uh, Chris is his name, is all up in, you know, the singer and all that, kind of like that would be Dickie Smothers, right? Because that's what he did. And the other brother was kind of somber because he very rarely smiles. I, I'll tell you all uh, another story, inside story that's a, uh, uh, is it subliminal or subtle? But I'm going to check your country music. You ready? Yep. So did you all notice that the other brother sat down a few times on the stool, and he sat down a little bit? Now, you got to really know your country music history to know anything that was going on with that. And as a guitar player, you know right away. So here's what that guy does. And, and I said, man, I picked up on that like that. So when you sit down on a stool like I am, and you put the guitar on your lap, you set the round part on that leg. You set it on your right leg because you're right-handed. And that guitar sits there if you sit down. Um, Leon Rhodes, who was Ernest Tubbs' guitar player for many, many years, put his sat and put his guitar on his left leg. So he sat weird, which looks weird. You go back and look at the, uh, go back and look at the Malpas brothers and see him setting that guitar on his left leg. And you think that because that, that if you looked at the stand, then here's the clincher. He's playing damn Leon Rhodes old guitar. I saw it. I mean, Leon Rhodes was Ernest Tubbs guitar player for a gazillion years. And Taylor has got his guitar. So he sits back there, doesn't say anything, but playing Leon Rhodes guitar. And 
and it's got Leon Rhodes stand sitting down. Sometimes if you guys are guitar players, sit down and put the guitar on your forward leg and see how weird it feels. It's hard. It's, it just doesn't even feel comfortable. But that's how he did it. So that was pretty cool. The Malpas brothers uh, this time blew me away. Not only uh, with so many of those things, that, that whole thing he's got going over there, um, most people won't know. He went out and he searched and searched and searched to find that amp. That was a 68 Standell amplifier he's playing through, which, of course, the guys played through in the 60s. So those guys really have a lot of cool stuff going on, a lot of stuff you don't even know unless you really know country music. And we sat back there and talked about so many things and different people in there. They're not as young as they look, but, man, those guys, here's a big word for you, are a plethora of country music uh, trivia in, in, in history, that, which is, I think, so cool. How about their bus? Yeah, yeah. Well, their bus isn't Merle Haggard's bus, but they did put the the Merle Haggard Santa Fe logo on the side of their bus because uh, a couple of people said that's Merle Haggard's old bus. It's not. They made it up to look like it. There's a, I, I can, uh, oh shoot, I can't think of his name. Just bought the Chief, Houston, Dale Houston. A friend of mine, his name is Dale Houston. He just bought the Chief, uh, uh, one of Haggard's buses. Anyway. But yeah, man, if you have not seen the Malpas Brothers, you uh, just do yourself a favor and do it. I hope they'll, I'm sure they'll have them back next year. Um, seems like they did quite well here. Now, I'm a train guy, so as I'm pulling into the parking lot, I look over there and I see Santa Fe Chief. Yeah. With the official logos on there and everything. Yeah. For, like for 30 seconds, I thought I was back 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, Haggard's bus. I do not know, and I should know, I don't know what that connection is with Santa Fe and the, the, the bus, the chief. I don't know why Haggard picked well, that. Well, he wrote sure. a lot of train songs. Hag did early. I mean, a lot Could of be. That's probably what it was. He was a big fan of Jimmy Rogers, so maybe there, there must be some connection in there that, but that I don't know. I usually know a lot of that stuff, but I don't know Another that. thing that I really admire about him, the straight man stayed straight all the way through it. Yeah, yeah, that's He it. might laugh a little bit. He'd look at us, and then he'd... Quickly turn his head back yeah. and go right back into yeah. character. Yeah, that's his character. And he it was sure caught his brother off guard a couple times. You could see he, his, his yeah. brother was losing it. Well, you know what? I'm going to call him because, excuse me, I'm going to call him because the skit they did, I'm going to take part of their skit, but I have a better, uh, another idea <laughs> that I'm going to tell him to, so he can throw his brother under the bus. I mean, do a mirror balls? No, oh. no, it's nothing There's to do with that. There's the horses on the, the screens, guys. <laughs> there, there they are. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that was just... Well, he's got those little legs. He must have had that thing made. Oh. Do you need another horse over at your place? Yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah, we had bad news. Our horse was still singular, not plural. Uh-oh. Right, honey? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, we thought the uh, horse was going to have another horse. I guess you. there's a word you call it. It's not called... What's it called? Infold, pregnant, what? No, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I, all I know is we had a, a hamburger thing over at the house. You were there. Yeah. And uh, I had to keep Eddie away from the horse. So that's all I could do to keep him out of there. So it's another story. Well, you got a great horse there. You can trying walk to, right trying up. to have another one. That's what we need is another horse. Yeah. I'm going to, with your permission, I'll finish up about the showcase. Yep, what's going to happen. You don't um, need my permission. Well, I like talking. Blast about away. It. The, well, you don't ever want to say that or I'll never shut up. So, Anyway, once we get through the, the tournament contest, which is this Thursday, and I'm sorry to say that it's already sold out, but it's, I'm also happy to say that it's sold yeah. out because that means it's going to come back next year too. Good news. Uh, we'll go into some uh, regular showcases and then do some of our what I call the specialty shows. One will be the duet show, and thanks for your uh, approval on that. Awesome. Um, we did one show last year. 2020, where I had 20 different singers doing 20 different songs. And I thought I'd have trouble filling that up, but nope. Everybody said, oh, I'll come and do the 2020. So that was pretty cool. And maybe we can work something with you where we'll stay away from the country classic stuff and do uh, no, I won't care. something else or no, whatever. I, I know, I don't know I'm open to anything is what I'm trying to say. Well, if you're open to anything, then what about 20 singers singing the same song? That would be interesting. <laughs> I'm or just, we I'm just trying to help. Yeah. Well, I'll take any kind of uh, suggestion because I, I think that I, like I picked a song. Up. I picked a song. That Tw sound good. Twenty singers all singing, all singing. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, 
We'll get, where's Heather? We'll get our boss up here. 20 singers, listen to me, boss, this is brilliant. 20 singers, one night, 20 singers all singing crazy. Yes. <laughs> Eddie, let's have a little bit. Crazy. Yeah. Hey, you know that joke? I could do the disco version. Oh, there disco you go. Disco balls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're in hey, the well. Y'all know that joke? It's a good joke. So the, the, uh, this guitar player and, uh, and his wife, she's a singer. They're traveling through Texas, and um, and they've got some uh, drugs in the car, and they get pulled over by the <clears throat> police, and police take them to jail. Cop comes in there the next morning and said, listen, we take this stuff serious here in Texas, and uh, you both have been um, sentenced to death by the firing squad and because uh, we, we don't mess with drugs down here in Texas. So they take them out there, and they tie the girl singer up to the pole and they tie the guy up to the pole and the chief, you know the cop guy chief guy comes down and says hey listen this is texas and i want you to know we're, we we just we're gonna you know it's the right thing to do and he looks at the girl and says uh, do you do you have any you know last request and she said you know i'd really like to sing crazy just one more time <laughs> so they go over to the guitar player and they say uh, well sir do you do you have any requests and he said Shoot me first. <laughs> <laughs> That's how us boys in the band feel about crazy. All right, where were you? So we're going to, uh, yeah, yep. it sounds like some fun things going. I think we're going to have a good time. I did hear, I don't know if I'm supposed to let the cat out of the bag, but I think I heard uh, Daryl Worley's going to be here. Is that correct? We have Daryl Worley? We don't? Yeah, we do. We do. So Daryl Worley will be here this summer, Ooh, y'all. We're really cool. excited about them. He's awesome. Did you talk and about Williams and Ree here? Yep, we did. Uh, Williams and Ree, uh, you know, I talked to them. I, I know you're friends with them, too. And, uh, and uh, they're, they're, everything's fine. They had a little issue, but they will be here uh, to, to, today. Tomorrow. Right? No, today. They'll be here today because um, we're going to go out. And you're invited if you'd like to go out and get yep. something to eat with them because we're looking for somebody to stick with the bill. Yeah. So <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be perfect. In but, South Dakota... It was like a pilgrimage each year when they were playing somewhere. You had to go there, and they oh played yeah. the state fair for years and years and years. Very nice guys, and I always give them a bad time because they've got a big mural in the uh, food court of just them two. And so when you're sitting there eating, they're always kind of the mural is looking over your shoulder, and you always feel like you're having lunch. And they got it ready to go so that when they took a picture, it looked like you were eating with Williams, Williams and Reed. That's funny, yeah, they're nice. I actually um, got them a record deal on Curb and produced a record on, on one of their records, and uh, it was tough. But um, they are funny boys. I talked to both of them yesterday several times, and I asked Bruce, uh, because this is going to be the last time I'll get to see him perform. Um, they're, they're retiring at the end of this year. And I asked him if he would go back and do some of their early stuff, because they've been here um, uh Twice since I've been twice since I've been here, and they um, they got you know they're funny, but they didn't do any of their old bits. Oh, right. And, and, uh, and Terry told me he said part of the problem is people are so damn uh, yanked about being politically correct. And um, I, I said he said you know he's an Indian, he's full blown Sioux Indian, grew up on the reservation, and he said I'll go out and make fun of the Indians all day long because I'm Indian, I I can. It's like me making fun of. Uh, people from Michigan or whatever, and um, he said, but the the you know people just uh, complain and and write to the casinos and say stuff because they they're. But I said nobody's going to care here. <laughs> Come down here and re- let her rip because yep. some of their old stuff. It wasn't dirty. Nothing was foul at all. But it they had funny funny stuff they did and uh, just you know Bruce got this song called I Love Fat Women and it's <laughs> funny. <laughs> I love, I produce a record, remember, I love fat women. Uh, running Bear is hilarious. Their skit with Running Bear is, is Yeah, yeah, funny. they didn't do that. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, you know, and it's like, come on, people, you know, get off it. It's a comedy. It's to have fun. You got to lighten up. But he said they get so much crap, you know, even at the casinos, which is where they're, they play casinos all the time. I said, you know, more people today need to laugh at themselves and laugh and not sit up there and be such a jerk, you know, about, oh, that, you hurt my feelings. Well, whatever. When they played South Dakota, 
Uh, they were, I mean, they played every little town you can think of. And they were, they didn't care if you were a Republican or a Democrat with their political humor. And we had a governor by the name of Bill Janklo. And they were merciless on <laughs> that poor guy. And he loved it. Yeah. He just loved it. He says, that's part of being in the public eye. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Well, you know, nowadays, I don't want to get into politics, but watch those late night shows. There's not one joke about Biden. There's not one joke. Those people, those late night shows don't do anything. They've done jokes about presidents for years. They've, every, it didn't matter if you're president of the United States, people are going to do jokes about you. That's just the way it was. They did. And they were merciless to, to Trump. Some not even funny. Some were mean. But people just get, you know, I don't know what their deal is. I don't want to get into that because I, I just, like I said, the world needs more laughter and more love and a lot less hate. That's my point on everything. Well, we also proved one other point. Which was? We need a horse. Yeah, no, I'm not doing all Eddie, if you show up with a damn inflatable horse, I'll kill you. Silence, I kill you. Uh, that guy gets a lot of guff. You ever know him? Yeah, the, um, oh, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Jeff. Jeff Dunham. Dunham. Boy, that dude, yeah, yeah. Jeff Dunham. Dunham. Yeah, I, I, I used to see him. I used to watch him on Facebook all the time. Now it went away. Um, so I, I don't know. Anyway. Um, so lots of good things at the Orange Blossom Opry. Yep. You're welcome to have a cinnamon roll and, uh, and, oh, and donuts. Man. Oh, no. those things are awesome. I don't know who brought those, but. I'm also going to have a, a which we did, did one of them. No, I, we done it. No. Did. We did a show where the showcase show was all kids. Have done or did. And it was tremendous. We sold it out. And I'll tell you, there's some talent oh, here. Oh, all kids? Yeah. A lot of the guys Kid, in the finals kids. are young. Yeah, you know. Youngsters, aren't they? Yeah, like Jake Reynolds and Gage Bolin. There's a whole new crop coming up through after Macy now, too. So, so to that's cool. close out the show just a little bit, I want to go back and just say something about the Orange Blossom Opry Band. Every one of these guys have played with huge stars. Uh, our bass player played with Trisha Yearwood for years, played with Tanya Tucker for years. And, and this is not a small feat. That's, you know, that's a big job. So in working with somebody like that, and uh, he played for Peter Frampton, uh, in working with people like that, and I played with tons of people too, you know what to expect, you know, you know. I mean, you know what's good and you know what's bad. You can look at somebody when they're on stage and go, you're an idiot, or what are you doing? Or Because that's what you do for a living. Uh, take that to somebody else's job. Um, I don't care what it is. Uh, if, you're a, if you build houses and you come see a guy that's got a house all jacked up and go, yeah, I build houses. Well, it's the same thing with singing. And, and you know, you, these guys work with pros, the best in the business, you know, superstars. And they look at some of these people, but they see a couple of these people have gone by and, and a couple of guys in the band, including me, go, hmm, there's some potential. Hmm, there's somebody. And they know because they've been out there playing with, the real, real McCoy, the real deal, and they know what it takes. And they look at a couple of those people and go, wow, you know, there's some, that person actually has potential, and they would know better than anybody. That's right. And the last contest here, we've had, we had a brother and sister competing each, against each other, and a dad and her daughter. All so in the same contest? Yeah. All in the same yeah. contest. Kind yeah, well, uh, we've had some fun. Any the, the opposite one? side of that coin? is I sit stage right all the way on the floor and look over. I can see Dougie's face, like, directly. Yeah. And when they hit that wrong note, Doug has this, like, thing oh, yeah. that he does with his face. <laughs> we call it the, uh, uh, the uh, um, I forgot what he called it. Skunk, uh, no, don't, stink eye. Don't give me the stink eye, Dougie. Dougie is a musical perfectionist. And let's say now that uh, the show is sold out that I want to go to, where can I see it from my home? What show? Our shows. But you can't because you're going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Be careful if, how you word things <laughs> with me, remember. If you're home, you can see it on Facebook. Yeah, on Facebook. And or what uh, is the next place? Uh, right? On uh, YouTube. Yep, and one more. Oh, uh, 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 on uh, the Disney Channel. <laughs> Instagram. Uh, oh, we're on Instagram too? Yep. I'm not on Instagram. No. What about, like my to, what about MySpace? No. I like oh, to make a correction. Never mind. Ba no way, huh? Facebook and YouTube. Yeah. Facebook, Got it. And, Facebook and YouTube. And that is if you're not here, of course, you can see it, right? 
Correct. But you can tag us in all your posts on Instagram at the Orange Blossom Offer. Man, that stuff gets so I, I don't get in. You could also watch it here. Go home and watch it again on yeah. Facebook or YouTube. Yeah, because the replay stays up there for a while, doesn't it? Yeah, <clears throat> I, I know it. Ever. Mm, my, yeah, my phone, I can't ever find it. It's not. It's probably pilot error. But uh, you can see the replays uh, on there as well. And if you go to the YouTube channel, which I could probably never figure out in a million years, but most of y'all could. And if you can't, go find some kid because he'll show you how to get there. All you have uh, to do is just hit the, the little it, magnifying glass yeah. and type in the Orange Blossom Opry. Yeah, so here's what you do. You hear what he said. You go to the, um, to the drugstore, the hardware store, and get yourself a magnifying glass. And do what? Type in what? Just type in the orange box. Yeah, just type on the. I didn't think you could, but right on that. See, it's simple as that, man. And why? And I you click it. follow, and it will literally let you know every time we go live. The magnifying glass will. Yes, it will. It's awesome. I never knew they did that. Did you? Nope. I didn't. <clears throat> we got to head to the house. We've had a lot of fun, everybody. Hope you all. Thanks for all the crowd coming here, everybody, this morning. Yeah. We appreciate you all. Thanks for the donuts. Thanks for the cinnamon rolls. And uh, the Orange Blossom Opry riders are ready to ride. God bless you all, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Neil. Thanks, you Roger, Heather, Apostle Paul, Captain Kurt, and Fast Eddie. I'm Bobby Randall. God bless you, and God bless the USA, everybody.